Good morning, good morning. Today, we're talking about one of my favorite things, and that is how to deal with the bureaus when they verify, air quotes over here, something that you disputed as accurate. Do you give up? No. Do you throw your hands up on the feet? No. Do you send the same dispute? No. What do you do when Experian sends you a statement saying that pursuant to whatever that they are not going to reinvestigate unless you have new and relevant information? What do you do when you look at your credit report and you don't know what to dispute next? Because you said, hey, this is unverified. <laughs> this collection, this charge off, this whatever is unverified, or you need to send me something with my signature pursuant to section 609. And they say, oh, no, this is verified. Verified is accurate. You're done. That's it. Thank you. Have a nice day. Well, well, my friend, you need to know how to set the follow-up. You need to know how to speak correctly. And you need to know what it is that you need to do to retaliate against this legally using the law to get your negative item removed. And I don't care if this is a collection. I don't care if it's a charge off. I don't care if it's a foreclosure, a bankruptcy, a late payment. There are processes in place and information available to you right now on your credit report that you can use to remove whatever it is that you're disputing. And like I said, I don't care what it is that you're disputing because the process is the same. And if you don't know your action plan and how to implement it, then you're going to get lost and this is not going to come off your credit report. So here is the beauty of this program with factual-based disputes. And let me just pause there real quick. You can find a ton of information on how to do this yourself as well as many other things down in the description. If you want to learn how to do factual basis disputes outside of just my videos, then head over to, again, down in the description, vault.my740.com. And not only are you going to find a bunch of awesome free tutorials and downloads and um, manuals and all that, but of course, I do have my store on there. So again, vault.my740.com. And maybe this just isn't for you. That's okay too. There's a lot to this. And obviously the longer you dispute, the harder it is to get your negative items removed. So if you want to see if I could do this for you, head over to my740.com. Schedule a call with me and I will see if I could do the credit sweep for you. All right. A done for you program. Okay. Now back to this. The beauty of factual based disputes is that you are not going to run out of information to dispute right off the bat looking at a credit report looking at your account looking at your collection your charge off your repossession your late payment you have 17 things that you can dispute now furthermore we want to dispute very specific information like the date last acted the date last paid the failure to enter the required notice to dispute pursuant to section 623 the fact that they didn't change the date last reported when they say that it was verified again air quotes here and so on and so forth. We have all of this information available to us. We're not just saying this is unverified. This is not mine. This is the result of identity theft. No, we're not saying those things. Those are not the things that are going to legally, permanently, and quickly remove them from your credit report, okay? And one of the things that you want to keep somewhere at the forefront of your mind is that yeah, the FCRA says that if something is unverified or meaning unverifiable or incomplete or inaccurate, that it needs to be removed, right? After an investigation that basically fails. Well, another thing that you need to know because it takes it a step further is that the bureaus don't care about the FCRA, right? Metro 2 doesn't say jack about incomplete or unverifiable. It says inaccurate. So using the factual based dispute system, you take information off your credit report that proves that the account is in fact inaccurate. And then of course, in violation, right? And we craft these super strong fact based arguments and we dispute that counts and we get them removed. So it doesn't matter when Experian sends that letter that says we're no longer going to reinvestigate this account unless you have new and relevant information, because a new factual based dispute reason is new and relevant information. If you already said it's unverified, you can't say it's unverified again. If you said it's unknown, you can't say it's unknown again. If you said it's incomplete, you can't say it's incomplete again. But you can go down the hierarchy, right? Just as I mentioned, date less active, date less paid, notice of dispute, monthly payment on a closed account, Charge off, charge off, charge off, charge off, charge off in the payment history. 
or any activity for that matter, after the account was closed. We have all of these things available to us. And you can't just dispute because something is inaccurate. You need to know exactly how to use these things. What is stronger than something else? Is the date last active stronger than disputing the balance? Is the date last page stronger and more impactful than disputing the open date? When you understand these things, then you can use them and leverage them to get your deletions. And guess what? In the last two years, all of my results, all my deletions and all my corrections have been permanent. All of them, a hundred percent of them. And that my friend is a record. Okay. So what you don't want to do is say something, get the account removed or get that correction that you wanted and then have it just Boop, right back on your credit report. And now it's going to be even more difficult to get that sucker off, right? You don't want to do that. So you need to be very careful in the things that you say to get your accounts corrected or removed, you know, whatever is relevant to what you're doing. And there's a very specific way that we do this, okay? So again, with factual based disputes, this is the strongest and Oh, I wish you could see the smile on my face right now. Like when I talk about this, it's, I know exactly what I'm talking about. And I just wish that you could see that this is the way to go. This is the way to go. You see, I'm not here to speak with, speak to convince you, right? I speak with conviction because I've been doing this for over a decade and I have the results to prove it, right? Because men lie, women lie, but numbers don't lie and mine say everything, okay? So what are you going to do when you dispute something on your credit report as you don't have the balance, you don't have the contract with my signature, delete it. And for whatever reason, it gets deleted and then it gets reinserted. What are you going to do? You're going to have to resort to section 611 reinsertion when you could have just found something that was actually permanently going to get the account removed and then dispute it, get it removed and move on with your life. Or, How about the fact that most consumers buy into this whole Section 609 thing? And yeah, 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 go ahead and hate, put a dislike on this video and whatever, but I'm the one that does this professionally. I know exactly what I'm talking about. I studied the FCRA and all of these other things, the FDCPA and, um, you know, whatever, right? This is what I do professionally. I know exactly what I'm talking about. And there's so much misinformation out there and I'm the one getting the results. So why aren't you listening to me? Section 609 has nothing to do with a signed contract and everything to do with your right to ask for a credit report, your consumer disclosure, your credit report, your summary, your summary of all your credit, this, that, and the third in your accounts and whatnot, right? That's what Section 609 has to do with, right? So, Sometimes, sometimes it's actually more profitable for a uh, data furnisher or even the bureau to just get rid of something than to continue paying for the dispute process. And that's the reason why you might get a deletion with that, because they just don't want to deal with you. They want to get rid of you as fast as possible because they're in the business of making money and they don't make money by continuously disputing, by paying The data furnisher already lost all this money when you didn't pay or didn't pay on time. And then they lost money when they had to get over to a collection agency. And then they lost money when they had to take you to court. And they lost money, so on and so forth. So now they're losing money having to dispute this when you're complaining about the fact that you didn't pay for your stuff, right? And you know what? No, I'm not hating because this is what I do. I've been in your position. I understand exactly what it's like to be the consumer because I was the consumer. But you have to look at this for what this is, okay? They don't have to give you signed contracts. There's nothing in the FCRA that says anything about having to give you wet signature. People came up with these things. They took a law and they were like, oh, that probably means that. And they come, they, they, they turned the whole thing into this convoluted whatever and then sold it to everybody. So when you're asking for something pursuant to Section 609, a deletion pursuant to Section 609 because of a contract that you didn't sign because you signed up online for it. Obviously, it's not going to work because, number one, you're using a law that has nothing to do with what you're asking. 
Number two, you're asking for something that doesn't exist because you applied online, okay? However, with factual-based disputes, we're not coming up with things. We're not using laws that have nothing to do with what we're asking for. We're looking at our credit report, prioritizing and saying, hey, this is going to get the account off faster than this. So this is why I'm disputing it. And here's the information taken directly from my credit report that supports my claim. It's as simple as that. It is as simple as that. Okay, so we don't need to convolute things. We don't need to come up with things. We don't need to pull stuff out of, a, of uh, excuse me, out of a hat. We very simply need to pull our credit report up. And I have my clients use Identity IQ, the link which is down in the description. If you want to get, uh, use my partner link and get a discount at twenty one ninety nine per month instead of twenty nine ninety nine per month, and see all three bureaus next to each other. But this is really simple. This is really simple and you can get results. If I can get results, then you can get results. If he can get results, then she can get results. But you just have to do it the right way. And again, the beauty of factual based disputes is that you're not coming up with anything because we're using exactly what the bureaus, the creditors, the collectors, and the courts are reporting and crafting our arguments based on that information. So when the bureaus say this is verified as accurate, all we're going to do is find a new and relevant dispute reason going down the hierarchy that is going to allow us to dispute something new on the account. And if you go back through my videos or go to expertcreditsweeps.com slash dispute dash reasons or slash hierarchy, you're going to see that you have 17 different things on an account right off the bat that you can dispute. One of those things is going to get the account removed. And if it doesn't, you can challenge their violations, okay? And if they're still not complying, then guess what? Go to the CFPB with all of your disputes and the responses in your credit reports that prove that they are lying and that these things are in violation to get your results, get your deletions, get your corrections, okay? There's a process in place. You just have to utilize it. We just have to utilize it. And at the end of this whole thing, if they are still not doing what they're supposed to, then guess what? Take them to court. Take them to court. Because if you're actually disputing something that is legit inaccurate, then uh, obviously it needs to be corrected or removed, right? And if they're not doing that, then hey, guess what? They're breaking the law. You just have to exhaust your remedies prior to getting to that stuff. Now, obviously, yes, you can jump straight to a lawsuit, but is that really what you want to do? Probably not because most people don't do that, okay? Now, obviously it's your prerogative, but it's not what I highly recommend. But anyways, that is the process. That is how you deal with the Bureau's When they come back and say something is verified as accurate, you just keep plowing forward. You just find the next thing to dispute and you dispute it and you get your results and you move on with your life and you get that boat, that house, those new credit cards, your kids into a better school, more money in your bank because you got a better job where they actually pull your credit. Okay, so on and so forth. Okay. So if you have questions about this, post it down in the comments, like this video, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And like I said, if this is just too much for you and you don't want to deal with this, because yeah, it is a lot. And if you're not doing it right, you're going to do it wrong. Then head over to my740.com, schedule a call with me. I will see if I can help. And if I can't, I will have a recommendation for you. All right. So that's it for right now. Later on, we have a video about why credit scores are so different between different sites and different data furnishers. And later this week, we have our Georgia video, why credit repair is illegal in Georgia. And following that, in case you didn't see my video from yesterday or the day before, we have the journey video, okay? The journey from not having <laughs> anything other than bad credit to actually getting a house. And that's it. That is it. For today, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, prosperous, wonderful weekend if you celebrate Thanksgiving. Happy Turkey Day, all right? So have a great one. I will see you later and bye.